Yeah, my name's Donnie Miller. I'm an artist blacksmith. I got started blacksmithing about 10 years ago. I went to Schoolcraft College for welding and um, someone likened welding to kind of like doing tile work. You're just gluing pieces of metal together as opposed to uh, forging, which is actually, again, moving the metal like pottery, whatever. And uh, I fell in love. How did I find CJ Forge? And uh, my girlfriend and I at the time were shopping for a house in the neighborhood. We really didn't know the, the area at all. And I just drove by and saw an anvil on the side of the building. And I was always been, I've always been interested in blacksmithing. Um, so I just pulled in, you know, and said, I'm gonna go in for a minute. She's freaked out. But anyway, I walked in and it was like, hallelujah. Like, this is like church. I said, I'll scrub the toilets, I'll mop the floors, whatever it takes, I just want to be a blacksmith. And they said, well, come back tomorrow, we'll put a hammer in your hand, see if you actually like it. And, uh, and I've showed up every day since. <laughs> CJ Forge has been around for about 15 years, something like that. Uh, they bought the building in 2002 and have slowly transitioned into where we are today. Uh, for a long time, we sold tools to other blacksmiths, and now my main bread and butter, so to speak, is teaching classes here. Lessons, uh, ornamental interior hardware, custom furniture, stuff like that. On a whole, we are pretty slow here at CJ Forge. There's not a lot of custom commission work coming through, um, but I think the key is just exposure, you know? Like I said before, it doesn't matter how many cool things we make if nobody knows we exist, you know? I don't know, hopefully the future uh, will hold something for us. Um, the idea is possibly to turn this into an the entire building into a school, a full-time blacksmithing school, um, and do custom commission work on the side, um, as opposed to how it is now, how we do commission work and then do classes when we have time. Um, just because there is such a resurgence in it, so many new younger people want to get into it, so might as well capitalize on it, you know, or that's not the right word, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Uh, for the most part, we've become a, a throwaway society. You know, we order uh, by clicking online and ordering from big box stores. And um, I hope that there is a resurgence in handmade things, you know. But um, as far as blacksmithing on a whole, it's had um, a lot to do with it. Look back 4,000 years ago, you know, the, the Industrial Revolution and everything since then has totally affected the blacksmith and what we do. But um, how does it affect my work today? The majority of things that people are looking for that are mass produced are simply just fabricated. They're welded, drilled, saw, cut, grind, you know, that kind of thing. It's not actually moving the metal like, like blacksmithing is. It's forging like pottery, moving the steel. Um, that can never be replaced by mass production, you know. There are no machines that can replicate what we do, you know. Really, it's true. What kind of projects do I normally do? <laughs> Bigger commission work, usually chandeliers, wine racks, custom dining room tables, so on and so forth. I've always liked uh, boxes. I made that copper mailbox over yeah. there and I uh, just wanted to make a little chest for myself just to keep my keys and whatever else. And uh, I made all the rivets, made all the hinges, made the handles, forged well of the rings. Um, belongs in the bottom of the ocean, you know? Okay, yeah. For doors, for barns, whatever else. And obviously you forge out the finials, add lag bolts all the way through it, but that's one and a half times the thickness of my diameter, so I cut it to length, and I know I'll get the same size button head on this side, so it's a locked pin hinge. Yeah. There's also removable hinges, sure, you know, where you could pop it out, but if it's on an exterior, you don't want somebody to just pick up your door and walk away with it, <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, tap, tap, tap. Yeah. Did I show you the Frederick's Cross? That's how it starts, just a square bar. Isn't that crazy? You cut down to the center of the bar and then you just cut in on an angle like that, like somebody did, unfold it. That's what gives you that diamond in the middle. So blacksmithing as a whole has kind of died as a trade. We no longer make nails and horseshoes. Those can be store-bought, which is a good thing. But as an art form, it's very much alive. There's definitely a resurgence in it due to the popularity of TV shows and whatnot. Um, there are more and more young people getting involved in the craft, and uh, every state has different clubs with 
close to 500 members, you know, there's probably 25,000 blacksmiths across the U.S., you know, but, um, and many more across the pond, for sure, you know. So it's definitely very much alive and hopefully thriving. If I can do it, anybody can. I encourage everybody to do it. You don't need to be strong or tough, whatever. It has nothing to do with it. It's all about finesse. And um, there's a million things to learn. It's a you know wonderful craft. If you like working with your hands, you know if you have any interest whatsoever, I don't know. Try it. You know, start with what you have. All you need is a hammer and a fire source. You know, and um, you know something to beat on, basically. <laughs>